lowering the counter-cyclical capital buffer and setting up the banking sector SME lending coordination mechanism to support the wider economy. The Hong Kong MA and banks have a long history of collaboration to continuously enhance the banking system, making it more resilient, competitive and inclusive. Driven by our joint efforts, the banking system remains robust, well capitalized, highly liquid and has been able to deliver high levels of operational continuity despite various challenges. We are prepared and are ready taking actions to support our clients, especially the small and medium sized enterprises to help them tide over the uncertain times. So looking ahead, there are challenges, but equally there are many opportunities. We look forward to continuing working closely with Hong Kong MA under Eddie's new leadership in the future as well. So ladies and gentlemen, now let's give Eddie a big applause and invite him on stage to share his thoughts with us. Eddie. Welcome, Mr. Yu. Before inviting Mr. Yu sharing his insights, how about let's take a group photo together. With Ms. Hoon and Mr. Yu, let's take a photo. Please face our official photographer in the front. So let's get ready. Three, two, one, smile. Let's take some more photos at this memorable moment. And then would you please face the cameras at the back from our media friends. Let's take some more great photos for our media friends, please. Yes. <laughs> we can't wait to your wonderful sharing. Let's take some more photos. Three, two, one, cheers. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Yu and Ms. Hoon. I should now pass the floor to Mr. Yu, please. Thank you, Mary, uh, for your introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. It is a great honor for me to speak to you formally for the first time here as the Chief Executive of the HKMA. And I feel particularly honored because I actually wanted to be one of you, to be a banker when I first graduated from college many years ago. And I actually joined one of the banks here, which is represented uh, in this table, to be uh, what they call a covenant officer trainee back then. And uh, I spent a few months there. And as part of the training, I, I actually spent a few weeks working as a teller in the Sagip May branch of the bank, which is right next to a wet market. So I actually knew quite firsthand all the challenges that you have in handling customer complaints, especially with the experience of handling and, uh, and also dealing with some angry market vendors from that wet market when they bring in a big bag of coins or a big pile of wet band notes. If you get a bit slower in counting that, there, there will be angry voices. But unfortunately, my ambition to be a banker ended very quickly when I got a call from the government uh, but some skills remain with me, and I can assure you that I can still count the bank notes as quickly as a bank teller, uh, even to this day. But life takes many turns though, and I joined the HKMA when it was first established in 1993. And like Mary said, I've since been involved in almost all functions of the HKMA, and have already worked with many of you in a very productive and collaborative way. So you can expect some consistency and also continuity in the way that the HKMA does its work. So no surprises from me. But the world does not stand still. And the economic, social, and technological environment is constantly changing. We might see many positive developments, but we can also be sure that there will be new problems and also uncertainties, which will require new approaches and solutions from both the banking sector and the HKMA. So to begin, let me briefly talk about the macro landscape that the banking sector will face in the next few years. First, in terms of economic outlook, I believe that we all agree that things are getting increasingly difficult. Just two years ago, we were still talking about synchronized growth in both advanced and emerging economies. But now we are seeing the reverse. We are more talking about a synchronized slowdown of the global economy. With this year's global growth forecast to be the lowest since the global financial crisis. And this downbeat picture is very much a result of trade tensions. And its effect not only on trade, but also on manufacturing, 
investment and also consumption. There are also uncertainties arising from other factors like Brexit and other geopolitical events. But even without all these transitory risks, there are still some long-term structural trends like pro re declining productivity or aging population that the world still have to grapple with. And for us in Hong Kong, we should expect more intense negative spillovers if the US-China disputes were to continue or if the global economy were to continue to lose its momentum. And any blessed one effect might also can always take us by surprise. And secondly, on the financial side, there are also uncertainties about where monetary policies of the major central banks are, are going and also how these changes might affect both the real economy and also the asset markets. As the global economy comes down, most central banks around the world have taken a reversal mode, a U-turn in fact. They are now turning from the tightening or normalization stance that they took just a year or so ago into the current trend towards monetary easing, whether it's through rate cuts or, or unconventional means. And maybe lower for longer can really turn into lower forever. But we also need to monitor closely whether these easy monetary conditions will lead to financial imbalances, especially when asset prices around the world are already quite elevated. Another concern is that when the next financial crisis hits, or if a global recession arrives, central banks will have very little ammunition left to stimulate the economies. Thirdly, the banking sector will face more rapid technological transformation. There are, of course, opportunities, but there are also challenges associated with this, and I will talk about this a, a bit more later. And then there is the social political environment that banks operate in. The last few months have shown us that banks are indeed affected by what's happening in society at large, and sometimes in ways that are quite unexpected. It also reminds us of the importance for banks to have sound business continuity and also business recovery plan. Effective internal and external communications, as well as good coordination with your peers and also with the regulator. And despite the problems, I trust that our banks can keep up the good work in serving their customers in a professional way. So the macro, in the macro environment in the next few years, unfortunately, will be quite challenging. We're talking about a downbeat global economy, unpredictable monetary policies of major central banks, rapid technological changes, and also uncertain domestic socio-economic environment. And against this landscape, I would like to talk about three key areas where the HKMA must be prepared in order to adjust to the changing circumstances. First, it's about our core mission of monetary and financial stability and how we, work, we can work with banks on that. And second, it's about our market development work. And third, it's about the exciting but also challenging area of technology. And then I will conclude by sharing some thoughts about the relationship between the HKMA and the banking industry. And let me begin with the core mission of the HKMA, which is the maintenance of monetary and financial stability. This is the very foundation of our economic development and our role as an international financial center. Without stability, there's very little of development that we can talk about. To deliver that, it's more than just market surveillance or building buffers in the banking system or preparing contingency plans and making all kinds of technical or regulatory preparations. In fact, we've done all that. A key part in maintaining financial stability is actually to uphold confidence in the integrity of the financial system. And a key instrument in doing that is effective communications. In the last few months, there have been numerous unfounded rumors ranging from doubts on the link exchange rate system, to restrictions on bank withdrawals, to financial, general financial stability in Hong Kong. The HKMA has acted very quickly and vigorously in order to rebut these uh, rumors, to lay out the facts, and also to reassure the public, both through the traditional media and also the social media. 
And let me reiterate three key messages that we've been putting out repeatedly. One is that we see no need and have no intention to change the link exchange rate system, which has served Hong Kong for a while since 1983. And second, Hong Kong will safeguard the free flow of capital and will not impose foreign exchange or capital controls. These assurances are made very clear in Article 112 of the Basic Law. And third, Hong Kong's banking system is robust and sound, with very strong capital and liquidity buffer against any uh, negative shocks. And I should also reiterate that the HKMA has the capability, resources, and also the determination to maintain Hong Kong's monetary and financial stability. The exchange, one, the exchange fund with more than four trillion Hong Kong dollars worth of assets provides a very powerful line of defense. And our monetary base amounting to 1.6 trillion Hong Kong dollars also provides a very strong buffer in case there are fund outflows. And since the global financial crisis, we have also built a more robust surveillance uh, framework to monitor fund flows and also financial market activities together with the other financial regulators, especially the Securities and Futures Commission. But it's still crucial for the HKMA and also the banking industry to stay vigilant all the time and be well prepared. While we will continue to work with banks on the stress tests or contingency plans uh, for different uh, risk scenarios, I think that banks should also ensure that their governance culture and risk management controls are all are at all times sound and robust. When it comes to safeguarding Hong Kong's monetary and financial stability, we are in this together. We are riding the same boat. A healthy and stable financial system is of course the bedrock for any economy. But at the same time, we also need to continue develop, to develop Hong Kong's status as an international financial center. And this brings me to my second key area of work, which is uh, market development. Competition among the international financial centers is getting more intense. We cannot afford to stand still on developing our financial services platform just because of what's been happening in Hong Kong in the last few months. We must move forward, look for new opportunities upgrade our financial platform and create more products to strengthen our competitiveness. We see at least three key trends that we should aim to capture. And these are China opportunities, green finance and fintech. The first is about China's opportunities. And you know very well that Hong Kong is already the largest and most important global offshore RMB business hub. And we also have very unique cross-border investment channels like the Bank Connect and the Stock Connect. But there's still great potential to further expand Hong Kong's intermediary role, for example, through the development in the Greater Bay Area. The region is a huge potential market for Hong Kong's financing, asset and wealth management, and also professional services. The second trend is green finance. Hong Kong is already emerging as a major global green finance hub. We are already a go-to place in Asia for green finance specialists and also institutional investors interested in ESG investments. The green bonds arranged and issued in Hong Kong reached 11 billion US dollar last year, which is triple the amount in 2017, and is also growing for a while in this year. We also launched the first government green bond earlier this year with really good response from the market. And we've also set up the Center for Green Finance just a few months ago. We are also jointly working with the banking sector with all of you to develop a green banking framework. And I hope all of you will support and join our effort to create a vibrant green finance ecosystem in Hong Kong. The third trend is fintech, which I will talk about more later. But before that, I, wish I should add that apart from the three key trends that I talk about, which is China opportunities, green, and also fintech. We are also working on other opportunities that we believe Hong Kong is very well positioned to capture, including infrastructure financing, private equity business, corporate treasury centers, private wealth management, including family office, and so on. 
So there's a lot that we can work together. In fact, I've been asked many times recently how the current events in Hong Kong might affect our market development or promotion work. My answer is basically we should double up our effort. We should not stop. We will be left behind if we don't work hard in advance. And I firmly believe that the fundamental strength of Hong Kong as an international financial center are intact. And we will closely collaborate with all of you to make the most of those strengths. Let me now turn to technology, the third key area of our work in the coming years, and an important area as well. We have already achieved quite a lot in the last few years. We set up the FinTech Facilitation Office in 2016, and we've also launched a series of measures ranging from cybersecurity initiative to the seven smart banking initiatives that includes the faster payment system and also the granting of eight virtual bank licenses. And after the rollout of these measures, I can now say confidently that Hong Kong is already at the forefront of the global move towards fintech adoption. In recognition of our very vibrant uh, fintech ecosystem, the Bank for International Settlement, the BIS, has just set up the very first center of its new innovation hub right in Hong Kong. We have already made a good start in this very exciting digital journey, but there's still a long way to go. There's still a lot of scope for us to use technology to provide more convenient and efficient digital services to the public. And we also need to keep Hong Kong competitive in the digital age. Technology is affecting both the service delivery and also the back office operations of banks. And this includes, for example, the use of big data, AI and machine learning, cloud computing, and also regulatory technology, or RegPad as we call it. We have to work together to ensure that the industry grabs the opportunity but also, we also need to address some of the inherent risks that can come with these new technologies. As a regulator, we are very naturally interested in how RedPack can offer banks more cost-effective and automated regulatory compliance. In particular, data analytics and machine learning have huge potential in anti-money laundering surveillance. Another possible RegTech application could be machine-readable regulations, which we are looking into. We will also organize different RegTech events to further attract the RegTech community to, Hong to the Hong Kong market and gradually create a RegTech ecosystem here. We will also look into key RegTech pain points together with the industry and provide further guidance to help banks with the adoption of these new technologies. The HKMA itself is also embracing significant technological change. We have just embarked on a major digitalization program, cutting across different functional departments, including banking and AML supervision. And through supervisory technology, or SUPTAP as we call it, we can automate the supervisory processes and also use data science and network analytic applications to help us identify emerging trends or risks in a much more forward-looking manner. We are also undertaking a pilot project to collect more granular data from banks so that we can have a fuller and also more up-to-date picture of the bank's business. And the upshot of this project for banks is that in time, this could have the potential of replacing some of the template-based regulatory returns that you're doing now, and it will lessen your uh, regulatory burden in time. FinTech off offers great benefits, certainly, to everybody, banks, uh, customers, and also to the regulator. But it also brings new challenges, and let me just quickly look at three main aspects. The first is te technology risk management. It is essential for banks to have appropriate technology risk controls in place. And one new key, one new key area to, to watch is the use of AI. For example, what should be the governance framework that banks need to put in place to ensure proper ac accountability in the use of AI? 
Or will there be new issues, like whether the use of AI in credit scoring would result in potential unfair treatment of certain groups of customers? To facilitate the adoption of AI by banks in a prudent manner and in ways that address these new risks, we have drawn up a set of high-level risk management principles on the use of AI for, to provide guidance, actually for not only for conventional banks, but also for the new virtual banks. And we will be issuing a circular later today for this purpose. The second aspect is consumer protection. We are fully aware of that the wider use of digital financial services must be accompanied by enhanced customer protection. Only when consumers feel safe and secure in the digital channels that they would trust the banks and feel confident about using the new forms of financial services. And we look forward to collaborating closely with the industry to enhance not only consumer protection, but also consumer education. That's an important part as well. The third aspect is talent development. FinTech is reshaping the financial industry in quite fundamental ways. And that includes both work processes and talent requirements. The HKMA is now working with HCAP and also the Hong Kong Institute of Bankers to assess talent developments in the banking industry over the next three to five years. And the study includes a skill mapping exercise to identify the retraining, redeployment, or other HR needs in the banking industry. Again, the HKMA is itself introducing new technologies and applying new data science and also analytics. And we too will need to upgrade our skill set and also our mindset in thinking about web processes. So that will, developing talents will certainly be a path that we will travel together with the banking industry. I have talked about our work and future direction in terms of monetary and financial stability market development, and also technology. Each of these is vital to our banking sector, and in fact, vital to the economy of Hong Kong. In order to achieve all these goals, it is essential that the banking sector and the HKMA can work together in partnership. And don't get me wrong, I'm not referring to the kind of partners who struggle all their life to make the other side miserable. And I certainly don't think that a regulator should make the bankers miserable, just to show that he or she has not been too soft or too accommodating. I mean partnership in a more positive way. By partnership, I mean that we should always keep in mind our common goals. We all want banking services to be efficient and to meet the customer's needs. We all want banks to be financially sound, to command trust from the public, and also to support the real economy. Regulators of banks are probably coming from different angles, but by working together, we can create the best value for our society. And with these goals in mind, I will do what I can to be a top regulator. And by this, I don't mean to be at the top of the list of regulators, I'm not as arrogant. Instead, I want to do my job with an approach that is top, T-O-P, transparent, open, and proportionate. And I believe that by being transparent, open, and proportionate, that we can build trust and respect between the regulator and the banks. As long as we can get this relationship right and achieve a productive partnership, it should be much easier for us all to tackle the challenges that I've just talked about. Again, it is a great honor for me to take this position as the Chief Executive of the HKMA. As Mary said, it's just been one month, but it seems very long for me. My colleagues and I are very well aware of the great responsibility that we have to the, to the people of Hong Kong. And I look forward to working with you, the banking industry, to maintain monetary and financial stability, to enhance Hong Kong as an international financial center, and to help make our city the prosperous, stable, and contented community it should be. Thank you very much.